In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday, the end of the Easter season, in which we are calling to mind the last of these great mysteries associated with all that our Lord did to establish his church on the earth. That just as the Holy Spirit overshadowed our Lord, came down upon him when he descended into the waters of the Jordan and was baptized, you know, he said, that wasn't for my sake that, you know, John the Baptist saw this great mystery of the dove, the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove, but it was for the sake of giving witness to Christ that he is the Messiah, he is the Son of God. So today in Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit descends upon the, Holy, the church at its very beginnings, you might say, as it goes out now to begin its public ministry, like our Lord began his public ministry after he received this, you might say, this manifestation, this grace that God wanted to manifest to all of us through Christ. So now the church, the Holy Spirit descends, not like a little dove, a little more dramatic, a strong wind, maybe sound like a tornado. I don't know if you've ever been in a tornado, but they say it sounds like a freight train coming to your house. But, and also the tongues of fire, to manifest that the Holy Spirit comes like fire to to warm our hearts, as it says in that sequence, to warm those hearts that are cold, to inflame our hearts with love of God, and to manifest light to the world, to empower the church to go out to all the world, as our Lord told them to do at the Ascension, and to spread the good news. And we see that very clearly in the early church, how these men who were cowardly, weak, and maybe so indecisive, be became such bold pro proclaimers of the word and manifested their love for God to the far corners of the world. Sometimes even miraculously were they transported, as God said he would do. He would give them the abilities to do things so that they could spread the word. Already on that first day, they were speaking in languages that all those people who heard them could could understand. He gave them the gift of tongues, truly the gift of tongues, so that they could proclaim the gospel to those when they didn't even know their own language. And we know that even some saints had that ability. Padre Pio, it was said, people would go to him confession in a language that he didn't know, and he would confess them. He would know what they were saying and um, helped him to absolve sinners. So if God wants to, he can still, will still manifest those special gifts in the church today. And I think that's something that we have to call to mind, that the Pentecost is not some event of the past that we're celebrating. It wasn't the end, it was the beginning. And we're still part of this work of the church to go out to all the world. And we've all received our participation at Pentecost. We all received an outpouring of the Holy Spirit when we were confirmed. And if you're an adult and you have not yet been confirmed, I would strongly encourage you that you need to go and receive that grace. It's a sin against prudence not to receive confirmation. You know, especially they, the church was very strict that before someone entered into marriage, that they, if they hadn't been confirmed, they should be confirmed before they get married because they need those graces of confirmation to live out that vocation, any vocation, and how important that is. That's one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit manifests himself to you. He, he helps you to know your vocation. Sad to say, I think a lot of people choose their vocation. They spend more time deciding on what kind of car they're gonna buy 
than on the spouse that they're going to marry. They give more attention and more, you might say, discretion and more, oh, they really discern. Oh, I want this kind of car and I want this, but they don't seem to be as discerning sometimes in, in, the, in their merit, in the vocation they're going to choose for life. And the person that may be the person they're going to have to live that vocation with. Because as you know, with the whole confusion in our world today, we forget that married life is a vocation. It's a calling. And you want to make sure you're hearing God call you to the right thing. The other voc vocations, priesthood and religious life. We hear there has to be many people who are like this with the Holy Spirit when it comes to that, I think. Because there are more people who should be serving God in the priesthood and religious life than they are, than are, than are answering the call. Why aren't they answering the call? Well, maybe because, as it says in the other reading that was chosen today, that wasn't, it was a possibility to be chosen, is that it says the flesh and the spirit are at war at one another. And so if a society is full, full of the flesh, meaning, you know, indulgence of our passions, it doesn't necessarily mean the pleasures of the flesh associated with the Sixth and Ninth Commandments. It has to do with any kind of indulgence. And you know, our society wants to indulge you in everything. Entertainment. You know, how many people spend more time on their electronic device than they do really seeking to know what the Holy Spirit wants them to do that day? And we can't hear the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not shout. He's that little whisper. He manifested himself in fire and wind on that first day. But for most souls, he doesn't come and just knock you out. Maybe you might get that grace if you're St. Paul. He might give you a really strong grace to, to really make clear to you you're heading on the wrong track. But most of us, it's always that little whisper. Hey, Joe, you need to go pray today. Ah, oh, you know, I got this to do today or that. I remember an exorcist telling me, he says, you know, the biggest tactic of the devil is is to distract us. He says, we want to pray. Oh, and he says, hey, look over here. You got to do this. Or, oh, there's a new show on this and this. You've got to do that. Or he'll, he will try to show you everything but what you need to do. And so that's why is, yes, the Holy Spirit has come to us at Pentecost, has come to us at our confirmation. But we must do our part to cooperate. We have to. That's why we're supposed to do mortification. We're to do penance. We can't hear the Holy Spirit if all we do is constantly indulge our senses. Because the Holy Spirit is inside. He's saying, he's there, that little voice whispering. But to hear somebody whisper, you know, you have to pay attention. You have to calm yourself and say, what did you say? And listen, be attentive. It's interesting, in the Eastern liturgy, in the Catholic liturgy of the East, the priest constantly throughout the liturgy must have, obviously they knew what was happening with the, with the congregation. He says, be attentive, be attentive. He says that many times throughout the liturgy. Be attentive, wake up, you know, because people will probably fall asleep or be distracted. He says, be attentive, be attentive. He says it several times throughout the liturgy. Be attentive. And we need to be attentive to also in our spiritual life and not get bogged down as we can so much in the world, the events. Yes, we live in the world, but we should not be of the world. That's where we make the mistake. We get caught up in the things of the world and we can't hear the Holy Spirit when he's trying to lead us. Cardinal Mary Duval, great Cardinal of, of, the, of the Church of the 20th century, great friend of Pope Pius X. Matter of fact, he was the one that talked Pius X, was one of the instruments that God used to convince him that he should accept the papacy because he was very reluctant. He was, all, he was tempted to say, no, I can't take this great burden upon myself. But he had this simple little prayer that he composed to, be, to help us to hear the Holy Spirit. And all it was was a simple little invocation and said, and then you are to be calm and just listen, just to spend maybe 10 minutes just trying to enter into yourself and to, to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. 
because that's what we need to be more attentive to is we need to be a listening to the spirit not to the spirit of the world or the flesh but the spirit of god i remember one time in australia because there's a lot of people out there who are spiritual oh they are spiritual hmm, i don't know because when I was in Australia, this young lady, a Catholic young woman who worked for an insurance company, called me up and said, Father, our boss is not Catholic, but he wants his business blessed. He wants to know if you'll come and bless his business. And she said his wife is Catholic, and she's told him that he ought to have his business blessed. So he's not Catholic, but he's open to it. So he would like to know. He asked if I knew a priest who would come and bless his business. I said, well, of course, I would be happy to do that. But, you know, there are some things I think you have to make clear that if you're asking God to bless your business, then that means you're intending to do business like God would want you to do it. You know, there's certain things that you are going to ask God. You want his blessings, and you have to live in a way that you can receive those blessings. He says, well, yes, Father, that, um, you, you can explain that to them when you come. So I went, and it was downtown Perth. And the business was such that all the lower level people, all the clerks and the, those who were doing all the, 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 the clerical stuff were in the lower level and up like on the seventh floor was all the offices of the, of the managers and the, 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 the owner of the business. So before the blessing, there was like five or six people there and I explained to them, you know, that you know, you're, you're all here because you're asking God to bless your business, so therefore you're going to try and work and compose and do everything here in a way that's pleasing to God. And they said, yes, Father, we understand that. So I blessed that part, and then I went upstairs, and I blessed the office, and then I saw the gentleman who had asked for the blessing. I said, why did you want your business blessed? He said, well, he said, I'm not Catholic, but I'm a spiritual person. I don't necessarily believe in organized religion. But I believe, in, I believe I'm spiritual. And I said to him, well, that's interesting. I said, because there, there's a lot of spirits out there. How do you know you got the Holy Spirit? Well, I don't know. I said, well, that's why he gave us the church. Because the only way you can find out where the Holy Spirit is is where his church is. You know, a lot of people are all against organized religion. Oh, you don't need organized religion. All you have to do is be spiritual, really. I don't think that's the way our Lord established things. He didn't say, oh, go out and do whatever you want after he left. He said, go back to the upper room and await for the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's only through the church that you're going to get the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of other spirits out there trying to make themselves manifest themselves as if somehow they're good. You know, the devil will appear as an angel of light, but the only way you will recognize the Holy Spirit working is in his church. And in the church, the only way you'll know that you really have the Holy Spirit is if you have devotion to, his, to the mother of God, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you'll go off on some tangent somewhere. If someone says that they are devoted to the Holy Spirit and they have no love or devotion to Our Lady, I would say that they have not got the Holy Spirit. But anyway, so I said, you know, said that to him, and he never really thought about that before. That, you know, being spiritual isn't enough. The Holy Spirit is the soul of the mystical body, the church. It animates only one soul, the body of the church. He doesn't manifest. He's not the soul of some separated sect. He's there only trying to bring them back to where they belong. Back to the one shepherd, one flock. One faith, one Lord, and one baptism. You know, there's not a Presbyterian baptism or a Methodist baptism. If they're baptized, they're baptized into the mystical body of Christ, the Catholic Church. They just don't know that they're supposed to be members of that church. That's why we don't rebaptize them when they come into the church. But now we may even have to consider when they start messing with the formula for baptism and they don't use Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they may not be baptized. And we can see what terrible things happen when someone messes with the formula for baptism. We saw clearly in Detroit that young man who was ordained a priest and had been a priest for maybe five years. 
and just happened to watch the video of his baptism because people back then took videos. And he saw the priest and heard the priest, not the priest, the deacon did not use I baptize you, but we baptize you. And so he had to be receive over baptism, confirmation, and be reordained because he wasn't ordained. And they had to contact all those people who may have, if you received absolution from Father so-and-so between these dates, you may need to go back. You need to go back for confession because, sad to say, he was not validly ordained. You didn't get absolved from your sins. That's why we are so careful and ought to be so careful with the sacraments. They are life and death matters. But today, as we look around and we are living in a church, the Holy Spirit is here today to help us. So that if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, if we have some issues that are help pre preventing us from doing what we ought to do, helping us to mortify the flesh, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. What does it say? He said it is a spirit of self-control, a spirit of courage, because why? The biggest obstacle we, ex we will face in our spiritual life is ourselves. Our passions are the biggest thing that we have to overcome. And so that requires great courage and self-control and perseverance. You know, it says that a man who can control his own will is stronger than a man who can conquer ten cities. When you think of the great victors of battle throughout the ages, someone you know who's like Napoleon or Alexander the Great or some military general who's conquered and had to undergo great sacrifices to win victory, that's nothing compared to a person who has to control his own will. So that's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. It's to conform our wills to God. He's called the sanctifier. He's to make us holy. What does it mean to be holy? Very simply, becoming holy means that I conform my will to God's will, that I want what God wants. That's holiness. That's also happiness. To the degree that you conform your will to God's will, then you will be happy. If you're not happy in your life, maybe you ought to look and see if it's something that you're not doing that you ought to be doing and conforming your will to God's will. Usually it's because we're kicking against the goat. I don't like that God's doing this and wants me to do this, and that's why we're not happy. So that song's a be happy, well, be holy. It's just that simple. Conform your will to God's will. Do it his way. His way is the right way. It's not like God is just, you know, has this suggestion. He has something that he's ordained you for. That doesn't mean ordained you as a priest. But his ordaining will is that he has some special mission that he wants you to accomplish. That mission is part of your vocation in life. So you young people, you should be praying already, what does God want me to do with my life? As young as you are now, you should ask every day, but when you pray the Our Father, thy will be done. That's what we're trying to pray for. That's holiness. That's what the Holy Spirit is there to help us to do. And so we have to spend time in prayer. We have to communicate with God and ask him, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And it's not always easy to discern. But that's why he gives us his gifts to help us. And why he also gives us the church and spiritual direction and to seek counsel. It says a wise man seeks counsel from many people. Many people who are also wanting to be holy, not just anybody, but people who are trying to live their lives according to God's will. So that is what the Holy Spirit wants to do today for each and every one of us, that we want to become more and more docile, tame, domesticated. You know, that's where the word cult, cult of worship, doesn't mean a cult like we have today, like people are out there, you know, following some weird spiritual guru. Cult just means worship in Latin. It's where we get agriculture. 
Because what does agriculture do? It takes that, that wild land and, and domesticates it so that it can produce something that is useful. Well, that's what worship is to do for us, is to take us wild animals that we are sometimes. We're not domesticated as we ought to be because we're always kicking against God and we're not always behaving as we ought. That the Holy Spirit is to take us and to make us docile to domesticate us so that we can be useful to him. And Our Lady helps him in that work, helps us to become obedient children, docile to, the, to the, our Heavenly Father and his Holy Spirit. So today, as we celebrate Pentecost, all of you who have been confirmed and those of you who are awaiting confirmation, if you're awaiting it, pray that that day comes and that you'll be so open and docile to the Holy Spirit that he can use you however he wants. If you've been confirmed, then today let us ask our Lord to help us to become more and more docile and be attentive to his promptings. That sometimes when we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit knows what we need to pray for. We just want to say, Holy Spirit, help me to know and to see and to do God's holy will. That great, great prayer of our Holy Father, St. Francis, may the power of your love, O Lord, fiery and sweet as honey, wean my heart from everything under heaven, so that I may die for love of your love, you who were so good as to die for love of my love. And then he goes on to pray that, he might, that the Holy Spirit would, that God would give him a, a right faith, a sure hope, a perfect charity, and that the will and intelligence to know and fulfill his holy will. That is really the secret to holiness, to know and fulfill his holy will. So let us become people of prayer, asking Our Lady that we will be attentive like her and celebrate Pentecost every day when we rise up in the morning Say, Holy Spirit, through the help of your spouse, help me to do what you have asked me to do this day. And one day, it may be the day that he calls you to be with him in heaven. But if you always rise every day with that intention to do God's will, you'll be ready for whatever comes your way. Whether it be just an ordinary day or it becomes, you might say, hell and high water, you'll be ready for it. Because that's what the Holy Spirit is there to, is equip you for everything. That's the best, the, the best emergency package we can have, is the Holy Spirit. To be with us and to assist us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do.